It is the another part of Dapper series. In this video, we will learn about the need of transactions and how we can use it in Dapper. So if you find this video helpful, then hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment. Make sure to subscribe this channel to get more videos like this. My name is Ravindra. Let's get started. Here we have these two tables, order and order details. So let's see what is inside it. So these are just blank tables. Order have ID and order date and order details have ID order ID, which is a foreign key of order table product ID. And this ID is coming from the book table and price and quantity. So now let's move to the Visual Studio. I have created this order repository and inside the order repository we have this create order method. Okay, so here what we are doing. So first of all, we have this connection. Now we are generating order in this step. So it is our order parameter. We are passing order date here in this query. So this query is just about inserting order date or inserting a record in order table. And here we have written this statement select scope identity and it will return a recently created ID from the current state sorry current scope so whenever we insert a new record it will create a auto incremented id as auto incremented id and that id will be stored in a id column so here if we look at this so in this id column we will have auto generated id and at the rate scope identity will return sorry not at the rate scope identity function will return newly generated id and here we are using this scalar function execute scalar async because we want to get that id after execution so we will store that id here and now we are saving order details okay so from here we are getting the order details array or order details collection we are loop looping over the order details collection and here we are just creating order detail parameter with these with these parameters order ID we will get from here. So we will get order ID from here which is which we are passing here and product ID will be will be fetched from this order detail and price will come from order detail also and quantity will come from order detail also. So here we are just just writing this query insert into this table order detail order ID product ID price and these are the parameters we are passing and we are just using this execute async method we are passing the query order detail parameter and command type will be command type dot text and I also have created order controller and here we have this method create order and we are just we are just creating some hard coded data here so that so that we don't have to pass it in a uh, we don't have to pass it from the from the postman or swagger because uh, because we need to pass this data multiple times and I do not want to enter this data just because of this grid I have to save it somewhere so and this grid is coming from the book table so here we have this book table and here from here 
I'm copying this grid I guess I have used these two grids here so here we are just using some some hard-coded data product ID and I'm copying grid from the book table price 200 quantity 1 and another product ID and price and quantity also and here we are calling the create order method from order repository from here and we are just returning created an action name of action and in the exception section or cache section we are just returning available zero internal server error so here so let's run this code so what's happening here let me explain once more we are generating order and getting the order id from this query and on the basis of that order id we are generating order details suppose suppose we have created an order its id is one then order id will be one for every record in order details so that's just a basic scenario so let's suppose something happened after generating the order so we have generated order and something happened here so let's type here could not could not save order details it is just a it's just a pathetic exception so i'm just using it for the testing purpose nothing else because uh, because i do not want to mess with this stored procedure right now or this query sorry so let's back to the point here suppose we have generated the order and after generating the order we have get some error maybe we got error here here somewhere i don't know where so maybe we have some error here it is just a possible scenario that's why i am throwing an exception here so what will happen if we have generated order and we could not generate the order details because something happened in the order details section some kind of error happened or maybe we have lost connection we have lost database connectivity something like this and we have got some error here so let's see what will happen so we have to run this code first so let's run this endpoint here in the order section and just try it out and execute it and let's see what will happen here so i have stopped here in the cat section and here we have this error message could not save the order detail so let's run this guy and let's move here so let's see it so here we have generated order with order id 11 but we have we do not have any order detail and it is a huge blunder here because we have generated the order but could not generate the order details so what is the solution here so one so solution should be like this either both order and order details will generate or none of it so it is a atomicity principle of acid either the whole transaction will occur or none of it so we will put this whole code inside the transaction then either this whole transaction will be completed or none of it so if i put this code inside the transaction either order and order details both will be completed or none of it so let's let's put it here 
so let's copy these guys and just cut it okay so just copy from here just copy from here to here so now our method is just neat and clean and why it is neat and clean because i am going to put transaction here so just type here var transaction but 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 to use the transaction we need to open the collection otherwise it will throw an error so we need to open the connection here okay now we'll just write here where transaction equals to connection dot begin transaction and here we can see the type of this idb transaction so i'm gonna type here idb connection and i'm going to use using keyword so that we do not need to worry about we do not need to worry about disposing this connection this transaction let me see why we are getting this error begin transaction uh, yeah. let's see what it is idb transaction idb transaction using okay now we are fine we have opened the connection we have started the transaction now we need a try catch block and here is our catch block exception ex and we are just going to throw error from here we are not going to catch it here so here we will write transaction dot rollback and here in the try block we will write transaction dot commit and earlier i have copied the code sorry cut the code from this create order section so i am going to paste it here in this try block so i'm just gonna paste it here and that's it okay so yeah now that's it now it's looking much better okay so let's try to run this code where it is yeah it is here so what i did it here I have created this transaction and oops so I have created a transaction here I have started transaction inside the try block I have put all the code and at the end of at the end of try block I have committed the transaction in the cache block I have used the rollback so if any error happens in this section our transaction will be rolled back so here just execute this guy let's see what will happen so yeah we are here in the exception block so let's see here we have this five zero error and let's see let's see do we have any extra records no so we haven't generated any records okay so let's delete these guys and yeah so now let's remove this where it is oops it's not here it's here let's remove this throw exception and let's run the code again so let's try to execute it again and let's see what will happen so yeah i'm again in the catch block begin reader requires command to have okay 
we need to modify one more thing so just just go here again in the order repository and we need to modify both queries here execution of both queries so let's move here in the first execution which is here await execute scalar async order query order param first second and here the third parameter will be as you can see here the transaction so we're going to pass transaction which we have defined here so we are passing this value here and here also in the second execution of query first second and here the third parameter will be a transaction okay i guess we are good now so here let's run the code again and now let's execute this api slash order and here we have 201 and successfully created and let's go here and now we have order id 12 and order related to order id 12 so that's that's good thing so yeah that's all about the transaction with dapper so that's it for now see you next time